Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today we are using some Ulta new products. I'm using the Pen Sketch Flower Stamps and Die, the Pinstripe Background, and then I showed you the Mega Labels, but I actually ended up using a Walk in the Woods. Um, but really what we're here to do is look at Ulta new's new alcohol inks. And so I um, have chosen two different color uh, groupings. I'm using the Fall Harvest group, that is the um, yellowish oranges, and then the Lapis Lazu, I looked it up even how to pronounce it, um, for the blues, because you know I love me some blues. So first things first, just comparing a few things. Um, the bottle is 30 milliliters which comparative to some other alcohol inks on the market, like the other um, one I have is this Tim Holtz one here, these are 14. So you get more than twice the amount that you do for the other alcohol inks on the market. Plus they have their colors on the top of the lid, which I really enjoy. Here, this is just regular cardstock and I'm just kind of dropping them in there so I can get an idea of what the colors are gonna look like. They won't look exactly the same because this is a regular cardstock versus a Yupo paper or a glossy cardstock, um, but I'm just trying to ballpark it here. Uh, if you are interested in using alcohol inks on a regular cardstock, I did a video earlier this week on that and I will link it at the end of this video. So now I have my Yupo paper. This is just regular Yupo paper. It is not heavy weight Yupo paper, um, which they do have, which is easier to heat emboss on, okay? Just so we're clear there. Um, and just some regular alcohol. I'm just gonna go through. I am going to drop down some color. I'm going to add some alcohol to the paper. And then I'm gonna use a hand blower to kind of move the colors around. My game plan was to have a little bit of the yellows, a little bit of the blues, and a little bit of a really pretty green where they meet in the middle. That was my game plan going in. Um, and so before, while you watch me do this, <laughs> um, I did want to say that this is part of a blog hop. I will link below um, if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, Altenu is having a wonderful blog hop. There's always so many talented designers. And... Um, they are giving away like $300 in prizes. So with that said, um, these moved no different than any other alcohol inks I've ever used. Like they are exactly the same as the other things on the market, but they have a couple of other things going for them. So let's talk about price point. Um, for the Tim Holtz ones for 14 milliliters, it's, I, I found looking at, you know, the regular craft stores, they were anywhere between three and five dollars on regular price. Now, obviously you have sales and things like that, um, but anywhere between three and five dollars for 14 milliliters. These are six dollars for 30. The other ones you can buy in a three pack bundle, and that is how I bought the majority of mine. And I found those for a price point of between $11 and $14. And cumulatively in those packs, you get 42 ounces of alcohol inks. Alta News packs are four inks. Um, for right now, they're on sale for $22.76, but I think they're normally like. 23 or 24. Um, but for that amount of money, you're getting 120 milliliters. So just make sure whatever you decide to go with, whatever's going to work for you, um, that you're paying attention to the amount that you're paying for, because it does make a big difference. Um, so I was really happy with the way that these moved, with the way that they worked together. Um, I chose specifically to work with alcohol versus an alcohol blending solution because I wanted to see if that was something that would work. Uh, and it does. It worked, it worked beautifully. I was really happy with the way the piece came out. Um, the other thing that is interesting about Alta News alcohol inks is it matches all of their current colors. Here, I'm just showing you that this is still wet. So even while I'm not doing anything, I sped this up a whole bunch, but you can see that the colors are still moving. Um, even though I haven't added anything else to it and I haven't even moved it off the paper because I have so much alcohol on there uh, that just it's taking its time to dry. I am going to go in and dry it, but I'm going to keep my heat tool way, way far away. We're going to talk about that here in one hot second. Um, 
but you can, it matches all their colors, but you can also use them to refill your alcohol markers if you have them, which I think is pretty cool because that is something that the other alcohol inks definitely don't do. So these serve like a dual purpose, which may again make it more worth your money. So now let's talk about what we're really here to talk about, which is the heat embossing. Heat embossing on Yupo is very, very challenging. We're going to treat this like any other heat embossing for the application of it, meaning I'm going to use my anti-static tool. I'm going to stamp in a clear embossing ink, um, a Versamark or whatever particular company's in, um, embossing pad that you enjoy. And then Yupo is slick. So because it's a, it's glossy, it's non-porous, it's made to be that way. So the inks move across uh, in a really beautiful way, but it can be difficult to stamp on. So I like to use a stamp positioner, but if you do not have one, you can still use an acrylic block. You just want to make sure that you go straight down and then straight back up. So that way you're not risking smearing your ink. So with that said, Here's where we're gonna start the tips. Now, this is a shorter video just because this card didn't take me as much time. Um, so I will try to fit in some story time, but don't come for me if it's not in here because I'm not sure that I'm gonna have time to do it with all the other tips. This video just may be more instructional. So now that that's done, I am using white embossing powder. This particular one is just the Wow Bright embossing powder, but again, you can use whatever embossing powder you prefer. I'm gonna tap off the extra, and then when we move into the actual heat embossing, Yupo paper is not regular paper. It's a, it's a resin polymer paper, i.e. it's plastic. And so the heat that is required to melt your embossing powder can also melt your paper. Here, I've slowed everything down. This is real time. This is how fast and how often I am moving my heat gun and how far away it is. You want to have it at least, I would say, five and a half to six and a half inches away. You don't want it close to your paper. I mean, it melts like that, guys, like so fast. The paper will, will scorch. I have done it. So you want to keep it really far away and you want to keep it constantly moving. Now this is obviously sped up. You want to keep it constantly moving because we're heating up the entirety of the paper. That way that we're not worried about scorching or burning one area. We're going to heat up the whole thing very slowly. Then once you start to see here, for me, it's the bottom left-hand corner. Once you start to see some of them turning, then you can bring the heat gun to it super quick, maybe like a second, second, 90 seconds. Like, I mean, you just want to be there for uh, 90 seconds as a minute and a half, Lord, like a second or two. Um, and then you want to move it away really quickly. Like you don't want to be concentrated on one area for a long period of time. Take it to it. When you see that it's starting to melt, move the heat tool away and then bring it back. Keep consistently moving your heat tool throughout the entirety of this process. Be patient. It is long. It really is. It takes a long time and I'm an impatient person, but the results are really beautiful and they're different than what you're going to get anywhere else with any other kind of medium. That's why we like alcohol inks, right? Because they move beautifully together. And so this is another way to get another look from them. So once that is done, I am going to then die cut these out and try to arrange them. Here was the problem I was having. Those big, beautiful yellow flowers they just didn't want to go into my arrangement well. So I tried cutting them apart. I tried cutting other leaves apart to make them work. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I had to just let them go and maybe be for another card because I could not make them work with what I was doing here. So um, ultimately, I mean, as far as the, the heat embossing, it is possible. You just have to have so much patience to get it done. Keep that heat tool way up high, um, you know, and only be bringing your heat tool close to your paper. Um, and I don't mean very close. I mean, just a little bit closer. Um, once you see it start melting and then move it away real fast, be patient. That's, that is my advice. That is how I got the results that I was looking to get. Here, this was probably an error on my part. I probably should have used um, a dry adhesive instead of a liquid adhesive. 
I was having a little trouble getting them to stick to each other um, because, again, it's a non-stick slick surface. Um, so I really had to hold my glue down. Eventually, I'll figure out that I need to switch over to a dry adhesive, but that's almost not until the end of the video. Um, so once I have them all glued together, except for that one piece that didn't stay glued, I'm going to pick them up as one piece and move them over. So here I just got a little bit of adhesive on my white cardstock um, while I was arranging them. So I'm just cleaning that up with an adhesive eraser. And then I knew that I wanted to do the pinstripe in the background. This pinstripe stamp is hands down one of my favorite Altenew stamps. It's a really delicate background. It's super pretty and it's very versatile. So here I am leaving it on the stamp set. Like I'm leaving it on its acetate. And I am using the Mountain Mist um, color. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I have the little ink cubes. It's very daunting to ink up this big background stamp with the little ink cubes. I would highly recommend if you have a full ink pad to use that. Here, I got a little like string or something, and so I had to pick it off. I did ink up the whole thing, even though I didn't show it to you, um, because it took me five million years, and now Caitlin's in college. Uh, kidding. It really did take a long time, though. So once that is done and it's inked, I'm very careful lining up the bottom edge of my cardstock to make sure that my, my stripes are going to be um, straight and even. I'm just going to use a uh, piece of scrap paper. I thought I would use my um, like stamp pressure tool, um, but I actually was making me nervous that it was going to slide around. So typically what I do is I hold one side with one hand and rub the other side with my opposite hand and then switch. Um, super happy with the results that I got. I put my flowers back on it. It felt a little busy. Felt like the background was distracting from my beautiful flowers, which is supposed to be my focal point. So I ended up cutting down a white piece of cardstock um, to go into, just be like a buffer piece so that the flowers could really shine and be the focal point and the pinstripe would be what it's intended for, which is just a background accent. I decided that I was going to pop up that white piece just to get a little bit more dimension. Um, and I obviously did not want to have to adhere all these teeny tiny little foam pieces to my flower. So it was just easier to, to pop up the white portion. So I did that. And then I wasn't worried about the liquid glue with the back of the Yupo paper adhering to regular cardstock um, that I had no issue with. Uh, but I will use the dry adhesive once I get around to my sentiment. So, um, yeah, it's just, you guys know, we've spent so much time together this week. Uh, even though this video is, um, just a little bit shorter, I mean, and not much, I mean, it's still a, I'm sure for some video, like a, a Laura Bassin, like this 20 minute video, she'd be like, girl, I can't, I cannot talk that long. Um, cause hers are like five, six minutes and then, but she's amazing. Um, but yeah, so this one still is long, but there's just a lot of information to include in it. And I didn't want to skip out on any of that information um, because I want you to be successful in your heat embossing. So um, yeah, Peanut's almost done with his first week of school um, and he is enjoying his shoes. For those of you who have asked, he wanted a new backpack, um, for school. And I told you, um, Grandma T, Eric's mom, generously offered to purchase it for him. So it came, uh, last night and he got to use it this morning. So he was very, very excited about his brand new backpack. And then he put it on and he was like, this doesn't feel like, uh, any different than my old backpack. And I was like, no, no, but they're pretty much all the same design. So I imagine, um, that it does not feel any different than a regular backpack because it's a regular backpack. But anywho, funny how kids think, right? Um, so he was excited about that. Uh, Miss Caitlin has been doing very good. We have started eating real people food. Um, and so far she really likes pancakes. She really likes toast, uh, basically bread items. She's a girl after her mother's heart. Um, so she really likes those things. She likes mashed potatoes. She was down on the mashed potatoes last night. Big fan. Here, just to ensure that my flowers, um, did adhere flat since I was having a little bit of hard time with them sticking to each other, I just put, um, 
my misties and stack them on top and let them sit. You could use heavy books. Um, here I got a hair. I think it's a dog hair. I have two dogs. That would not surprise me. Um, in the glue. And so I was just removing that. Here is that um, A Walk in the Woods stamp set, and it had this really um, kind of encouraging sentiment that was, let your confidence shine. I fully intend to send this to my friend Catherine, who is kind of um, jumping both feet into her lifelong dream um, of owning a retreat and helping people, you know, uh, for mental health and super proud of her. She's such a wonderful woman. And I know, um, just like anything else that you would do, you know, changing your whole, um, career job, opening up a business, like all of it's terrifying. And so I really hope that she is going confidently in this direction because I think she'll be amazing at it. Um, so anyway, I tried it on dark blue cardstock. I didn't like it. Um, so that I stamped it on white in a medium blue. I didn't like that. So then I went straight to a navy and I was pretty happy with that. So here I'm just going to trim it into a label and then um, adhere it to the card. So she's been eating. Um, she kind of was like meh about the carrots, meh about the broccoli, uh, really likes bananas, big fan of bananas, um, likes shredded cheese, so she's been she's been getting a lot of good variety in her um her real people food and her brother Nathan was very excited to watch her eat real people food for the first time. So now when I'm making dinner, I try to be conscientious that there's one or two things that I can also give her um you know steamed vegetables or you know whatever the carb is that we're having just to kind of move her along because she is nine months old and obviously in three short months the majority of her nutrition will no longer be from her formula it will be from the food she is eating so we got to move her along here is a little trick so i didn't want to pop this up on foam um and i have a layer of um you know these flowers and so my sentiment isn't laying flush in order to make it lay flush i just took cut two little pieces of cardstock and then glued them to the back of the sentiment um, on the left hand side to make it even. Uh, and so now everything lays really nicely. I'm going to add just a couple of um, clear little gems to accent the sentiment uh, and the flower bouquet. And then that's it. That's the, the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you learned quite a bit. I would love to see if you're on um, Instagram or whatnot, Facebook, like tag me so I can see your projects. I would love to see them. And then of course, please head over to check out the blog hop um, so you don't miss your chance to win any goodies. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.